What if you wanted to make an object private, meaning you want to be able to access the data but not able to change it? We're going to have a little fun and look at a unique way of doing that in this tutorial. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. To be notified about new tutorials, make sure to click that bell button and subscribe. Also check out the discount links to all my courses that I've included in the description of this tutorial. And you can also follow a link in the description to support this channel. So if you want an object that cannot be reassigned and is also immutable, meaning it cannot be changed, you could declare it with const and then freeze the object. But just for fun, I want to look at a different way to do this because it applies some important concepts in JavaScript. Specifically, we're going to be applying closure the nature of functions, function scope, immediately invoke function expressions or ifies, and the spread operator. Now, if you're unfamiliar with any of these concepts, I will link to tutorials in the description section so you can go there and learn more. Okay, let's jump to it. All right, let's say I have this object. I'm just going to put couple of properties in it. First one's going to be a secret num 3141 and then a pass phrase for this next one. And since the pass phrase is a little bit long, I'm going to copy that one in. Pass phrase being a set of 12 words that I can use to unlock something. So there we have a simple object. Now let's say I wanted to set this object up so we could prevent change. Well, one thing we can do is declare it with const. That prevents reassignment, does it? but it doesn't prevent us from changing the object. See, if I come out here and go to the console, There's my private object. I can go ahead and change the secret num on that by setting it equal to something else. And that changes it. So const simply prevents me from reassigning something else to this variable. But because objects are mutable in JavaScript, I can still change them even when I have const. So the other thing we could do is we could freeze the object and that would help prevent from being able to change it. Now, if you'd like to look at a tutorial on freezing objects in JavaScript, I'll link to that in the description as well. I've done that as a tutorial earlier on. But what I want to do is use these concepts I described previously to make this possible, to make this object immutable. So let's look at doing that. So right now, this variable is very accessible because it's on the global space. So the first thing we want to do is put this inside of a function. That will use function scope to make it so that this is inaccessible. We cannot get to it. So let's do that. So I'm going to declare the function as get private obj. So here's our function. Now let me go ahead and put this inside of the function. And I'm going to go ahead and use let here. So I won't use const to prevent it from being reassigned. I'll, I'll put let there, but we still cannot reassign that because it's inside of a function. And so we can't access this variable except from inside this function. Now, the other thing we're dealing with here is this object won't even be created unless this function is invoked. And so let's go ahead and just invoke it immediately. So I'm going to put double parens down there that will cause this to invoke right away and it will create this object. But 
we have no way to access it. We can get private object. This is the function but we cannot get access to it. This is not a property of the function. It's declared inside of that function. And because of function scope, we're not able to access it. So the other thing we want to do is make this accessible so we can see this information, so we can get this information, but so that we're not able to change it. Now, the first step of that is making it possible to access that object. And we can do that by returning a function to this variable. And so once this invokes, since this is immediately invoked, what it's going to do, the end result, is return a function. So that this now becomes a function, this function right here, the one that's returned. And what are we going to put inside of that function? Well, when that function is invoked, we can return our private object. Now, there's still one issue with this, but let's go ahead and take a look at the solution thus far. So I'm going to refresh. And now let me just set up a variable here and set that equal to get private object and we're going to invoke that. And what does it return? It returns that object. So we now can see the secret num, we can now see the passphrase. But can we change it? Let's see. We'll set it to 3333 three, three, three again. Okay, so that of course changes it for the one that we receive back, the one that's in the OBJ variable. But let's see if it returned it for the other one as well. So let's declare a second variable here and set that equal to get private object. Now let's see what obj2. Notice it changed it for that object as well. The reason being when we return this object here, basically what we're returning is a reference to the object in memory. And so this object is placed in memory somewhere. So this variable has a reference to it. And then when we return that reference, it gets placed in OBJ. And so we're referencing the same object. So when we make a change to it, it makes a change to the object inside of this function. And we have access to that, and that object is still available because of closure. Once this function invokes, it creates closure around the object so that we can still access it, see it. And in this case that we saw here, we can even change it. Now, we don't want to be able to change it. So that's the one thing I need to change. And this is the last step in our solution here. What we're going to do is return a new object that will have the same data. And the way we can do that is by returning an object and then using the spread operator to spread out the properties of this object. So it'll place those properties inside a new object. We'll be able to see the data without being able to change this object here. So let's look at that. Save that and we'll refresh again. Let's go through that same thing again. So first, object one, or OBJ, we'll get that one. Let's see what that contains. That contains all of the information. Now can we change it? OBJ dot secret num equals, and so it changed it for OBJ. But did it change it for the original object? Let's take a look at that. So let's do our OBJ2 and then take a look at it. And we can see OBJ2 still has the original number. It did not change it there. And the reason being is because we returned a new object. So we didn't return a reference to this object. We returned a new object. And so anytime 
we call get private object will just return a new object we'll be able to access the secret num the passphrase whatever we put in our private object we'll be able to access it and see it but we won't be able to change it and we can continue to access it because of closure even though this function has invoked and has completed we still have access to that through closure so kind of a fun little exercise to see the power of closure to see the nature of functions in javascript how we can return a function to this variable how we can do it immediately with iffies using the spread operator to create and return a new object kind of a fun little exercise and i hope you saw some of the things we can do in javascript through this little exercise that was the purpose of it so if you found this helpful please hit that like button and of course subscribe also, remember the discount links to all my courses that I've included in the description section. Click the bell button to be notified about new releases. Remember, I release a new tutorial each week. And once again, thanks for watching.